Number seven says find the value of k so that the graph of the function g at x equals 2x squared minus kx plus 2 has two x-intercepts. So remember when it talks about x-intercepts, you want to be using the discriminant. And because you want two x-intercepts, you would say, okay, for two x-intercepts, that means the discriminant has to be greater than zero. Remember that the discriminant tells you the number of roots. And it's all has to do with the quadratic formula, right? Okay, so for two x-intercepts, the discriminant is greater than zero. So the discriminant again is b squared minus 4ac. So for this question here, my a is 2, my b is minus k, and my c is 2 as well. So I want b squared minus 4ac to be greater than 0. Greater than, because I want 2x-intercepts. So I put in b, that gives me minus k squared minus 4 times a is 2 and c is 2. And I want that to be greater than 0. So that gives me k squared, 2 times 2 is 4 times minus 4 is 16. So I want k squared to be greater than 16. Now you know that when you take the square root of k squared here, on this side it's going to be plus or minus 4. So if we just had k squared equal to 16, you'd say k is equal to plus or minus 4. But because it's greater than, we need to do a little check on a number line. So let's draw a number line here. And we're going to put minus 4 and plus 4 here. This will help you understand what's happening. So I know if I had plus or minus 4, that would give me one root. Because that would make the discriminant equal to 0. But I want to know, is my solution out here? Or is it inside here? So let's do a little check. So k squared, if I want k squared to be greater than 16, if I put in the numbers in here, let's say I picked 3, 9 is not greater than 16. But 5 would be greater than 16, and so would minus 5 when I square it, because that would make it positive 25. So therefore, we want k to be so we want k is greater than, now it has to be greater than, not greater than or equal to, so I just want greater than 4, or k is less than minus 4, and that's your solution here, okay? Number 8, it says a picture that measures 10 by 5 is to be surrounded by a map before being framed. Oh, one of these picture frame stories. The picture of the map, so let's see if I got a little square here. It's going to be pretty small, but a rectangle. So it's going to be 10 centimeters by 5 centimeters, and we're going to put a mat around it of equal length or width. A picture, so here's my picture in here. 10 by 5 is to be surrounded by a mat before being framed. The width of the mat is to be the same on all sides of the picture. The area of the mat is to be twice the area of the picture. What is the width of the mat? Okay, so if these are all the same, we can call them all x's. So if I was to ask you how far is it from here to here, you'd say, well, it's 10 plus 2 x's. So this is 10 plus 2x, and this way is going to be 5 plus 2x, the whole length from here to here, once it's all matted. So it's a picture with the mat. Now, I like to get my students to use words first because that helps. The area of the mat, area of the mat is to be twice the area of the picture. So the area of the mat is two times the area of the picture. So if the problem is I don't know 
the, the area of the mat, right? That's what I'm trying to find. But I know the total area. So if I asked you, what is the area of this mat in here? You'd say, well, it would be the area of everything. Subtract the picture will give me the mat. So the total area, total area is going to be 10 plus 2x times 5 plus 2x. The area of the picture is going to be 5 by 10 or 10 times 5, right? So that means if I take everything, area of the mat is going to be the area of everything or total area minus the area of the picture. So I think putting it in words first will really help you understand what to do with these numbers. So the area of everything is going to be 10 plus 2x times 5 plus 2x and I'm going to subtract the area of the picture which is 50. Okay, so now all we have to do is um, expand and simplify. So this is going to be 50. 50 plus 20x plus 10x plus 4x squared minus 50 and that's going to be the area of the mat. Okay, so what do we have here now? We have 50 minus 50, so we end up with 4x squared plus 30x, and that has to be the area of the mat. And the area of the mat being 2 times the area of the picture means the area of the mat has to be 2 times 50, right? So this has to be 100. So we've translated the area of the mat into a value here. So in the end, I end up with 4x squared plus 30x minus 100 equals 0. And now that I've set it to 0, I can solve for x. So what you'll want to do now is... Um, the quadratic formula, we could simplify this a little bit before we start. Everything divides by 2. Sometimes easier working with smaller numbers, but you have a calculator, right? So I'm going to get x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2 and a is 2. So that's going to give me minus 15 plus or minus the square root. 15 squared is 225 and I'm going to add that's 4 times 50 is 200. So plus 200 divided by 4 and now I think you need a calculator because I don't know what the square root is of 425. Uh, let's clear this second. Square root of 425 is 20.6. Did it say how many decimals? No. So let's say 20.62 over 4. So I will subtract 15 and I'm going to divide by 4 and I get um, 1.4 minus 15. I get 1.4 and minus, um, eh, minus 15. Minus 20.62, oh, I put in the wrong number, minus 15, minus 20.62, and I'm going to divide that by 4, and that's going to give me a negative number. Of course, the negative numbers don't work, 
minus 8.9. So this is inadmissible. Okay, so let's just see here um, what we did. We've got, I just want to check this calculation again. 15 squared minus 4 times 2 is 8. Oh, that's where my mistake is. This is 8 times 50 is 400. And it's plus. Plus 400. 625. Oh, that's a nice number. The square root of my answer gives me 25. Oh, 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 oh. Thought it looked off a little bit. Plus or minus 25. Oh, I bet we could have factored that. All right, that's a nice number. So minus 15 plus 25 is 10, and 10 divided by 4 is 2.5. I can do that in my head. Okay. 2.5. Okay, so now we're all done, and you need a concluding statement. Therefore, the width should be approximately 2.5 centimeters. Okay, so that makes a very nice little word problem for you. And finally, if you haven't fallen asleep yet, find the point or points of intersection, the x and y coordinates. Okay, so make sure when you're finding a point of intersection, you find x and y coordinates. This is the very last lesson in chapter 3. And it tells you that if you want to know where something intersects, you want to know where they are the same. It's that easy. So all you have to do is set the two equations equal to each other and move it all to one side. So I have x squared minus 5x minus 24 plus 4 is plus 20 equals 0. And that's not a nice thing to factor at all. So you're going to use quadratic formula. So x equals, um, I'll write a formula just in case you forgot, negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And that's going to give you 5, negative negative 5, plus or minus the square root when you plug things in, you should actually put in what the b value is, even though you know you're squaring it. Um, minus 4 times a times c, all over 2 times a, and a is 1. That's going to give me 5 plus or minus the square root of, this is 25, and we're adding 80, just a minute here, b squared minus 4 times a times c. Oh, Miss Havrock, I'm making too many mistakes today. That should have been minus. Minus 24 plus 4 is minus 20. Otherwise, we would have had no solution because this would have been all negative. So I have 25 plus 80 is 105 all over 2. And that's going to give me Let's find out what square root of 105 is. Second square root 105, and I get 10.25. So 5 plus or minus 10.25 divided by 2. That's going to be, uh, what do we we've got? 15.25 divided by 2. It's going to be about 7.625. The other answer is going to be negative. And that's okay because it's a graph. It's not um, the area of, let me just do the math here. 5 minus 10.25 divided by 2. And I get a mistake because I did something wrong. 5 minus 10.25. You know when your answer doesn't make any, any sense. Divided by 2 is minus 2.625. Okay, so that's not enough that you found the x-coordinates. You need to find the y-coordinates. And I'm not going to do that for you. You can plug it back in. So just plug this back into either equation. doesn't matter. 
right? Because that's where they're intersecting. So, well, let's do, let's do y. y equals 3 times 7.625 minus 4. So I'm using the first equation. That's an easy one to do. Or y equals minus 2.625 um, times 3. Should have put the 3 first, but it's okay. Minus 4. And if you do that, you should get minus 11.86. And this one gives you 18.86. And therefore, now you need to list your coordinates, 7.625 comma 18.86 and minus 2.625 and minus 11.86 are the, finally, da, 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 points of intersection. And you've done this very long test. I hope my students finished it. Bye for now. Hope you've subscribed and tell all your friends to watch too. Maybe they'll learn something like you. Bye.